Alrighty gamers, Yoshi here, and in today's video slash stream, which is currently being streamed on my Twitch, I'm going to be talking about Hunter Exotics, and for this video, the first video, I'll be covering Hunter Exotics in PvE. So let's get it started. So first off, we're going to be talking about all the helmets. The first helmet we have here is Assassin's Cow. The way Assassin's Cow works is, I believe, on finishers now, but also on melee kills. Um, from your throwing knife, um, you can you just become invisible, which can be good in certain situations. Being invisible can be nice for you know escaping from tr uh, tricky situations where you might be about. Uh, dead it also restores your shields and your health i believe on the finisher or melee kill it's okay um but it's just there are better mods out there and better abilities that pretty much cover what assassin's cow can offer you i think that top tree night soccer um, where you dodge, you go invisible, that pretty much covers it. And then there is a charge with light mod that gives you an overshield when you do a finisher. And I feel like just having a charge with light mod that gives you an overshield while doing a finisher and then you just dodge after you finish pretty much does what Assassin Cow can do for you. Um, and not waste an exotic slot. Sure, you have to waste some mod slots, but. In PvE, where you, and, well, this entire game, where you can only have one exotic armor piece slotted at a time, if you can compensate for that exotic armor through a series of mods, then there's no point in taking that exo exotic armor piece. You can just find another piece of armor that can fulfill a role that your mod system cannot do for you so um f tier really for me the mods pretty much do what assassin's cow can do but better next up we have graviton uh, forfeit not graviton lance graviton forfeit pretty much just extends or invis time and i believe if you have graviton forfeit on it will pull you off the minimap for pvp but i will talk about that in the next video for PvE, extended invis time, not that great, I, if I'm to be honest. Maybe it might be helpful if you're running bottom tree night soccer and you don't have um, Omni Oculus, I believe it's called, or that's how you say it. If you don't have Omni Oculus and you only have Graviton Forfeit, then maybe that would be good. Or if you don't have a uh, sixth coyote, if you don't have that exotic either, maybe you would use Graviton Forfeit. But how Graviton Forfeit only offers you invisibility, I wouldn't say it's completely useless, like Assassin's Cow. But really, uh, honestly, just it kind of feels uh, useless. I'm going to look at it here. Yeah, increases um, your invisibility, increases your melee recharge rate while invisible. Not that great. Um, it pairs well with bottom tree, but there are just better exotics on, um, on the market, I guess you could say, that can do Graviton's job better. And I don't really think extending your invis time is like a crazy thing to have going on in uh pve and the other thing is that gambler's dodge gives you back your melee ability which makes the getting your melee back kind of like redundant next up we have i believe it's this is knucklehead i always get knucklehead and foe tracer um mixed up this is knucklehead and then this is foe tracer knucklehead what knucklehead does is pretty much just gives you radar 
at all time. And when you're crouching, you have an enhanced radar. The enhanced radar is similar to that of the top tree Night Stalker radar, which would be the um, the tether radar, how it's like split into eighths instead of split into um, thirds or whatever, or sixths or whatever the fuck. Uh, radar, not really that. Having your radar up all the time, not really that important in PvE, especially when there's modifiers that exist that remove your radar in the first place. So, yeah, not very helpful, F tier. Next up is Foe Tracer. Foe Tracer actually starting to get into armor pieces that are kind of uh, uh, useful here. Foe Tracer marks targets that are low health and you deal more damage. Oh, sorry, my bad. It marks targets for you. And when these targets become low health, you deal more damage to them. This can be kind of nice, especially when you just need that extra like buff to push you over. It's definitely just like a, I think what it brings is definitely better than these F tier exotics. However, I wouldn't say like it's an average tier exotic. Buffing your damage on low, um, low health targets that are marked for you. Okay, I guess. But you could just be using a charge with light build where you have higher energy fire and higher energy fire just lasts the entire duration until your target is dead. Yes, with the charge with light, you have to get charge with light each time to use it. And Foe Tracer, it would just mark the targets for you. So I guess that's kind of nice, but it only kicks in when your target is low health. And maybe it's useful for elites. But on it, because I don't use this, that's why it's really hard for me to give it a C tier. It's just, maybe it can be useful for killing elites, majors, some champions. But for bosses, it's very not very good. Even for like champions, I just feel like Foe Tracer is just kind of like not that great. Especially since when champions are such low health, you're probably just going to land a finisher on them and just finish the champions for the remainder of their health foe tracer just to me isn't that it's not that great of a, an exotic next up we have mask of bacris mask i think is a pretty top tier exotic However, you can only use Mask if you're playing Stasis. It replaces your Stasis dodge with a shift, so like a teleport almost. Um, the teleport you can kind of control. And the nice thing for PvE is that when you come out of this teleport, it buffs all your arc, um, arc energy weapons and buffs their damage. So you do significantly more damage. And depending on your stasis loadout, you can combo this with um, when you freeze targets, you gain a bonus to your weapon damage. So you can have your weapons do increased damage. And then there's like the artifact mods that you can pile on top of it, like focusing lens or um, sundering glare. You could pair um, your weapons with that. It makes mask pretty potent. And I wouldn't go to say that stasis at least the hunter stasis is not useless and pve it's definitely a very utilized subclass even for end game content like grandmasters it's been very helpful in the past especially for glassway back when we had the overload uh, stasis nades when we could just spam the overload nades that was amazing you'd have constant nade uptime um, stasis even though you're forced to play stasis it's still pretty damn good uh, good using mask and the buff you receive is pretty significant to your uh, arc weapons so i think to me definitely an s tier and definitely if you combo this well with certain aspects and fragments you can make mask just work really well in pve next we have Worm Husk Crown, what Worm Husk does is that when you dodge, it grants you some health back. Um, that's pretty much it. It used to be that you would pretty much have uninterrupted he healing, and that was pretty damn broken. 
I wouldn't say it's S tier, but Warm Husk, even though it's more designed for PvP, definitely can get you out of a tricky situation in PvE. Um, especially if you don't have some of these other exotics, I'd say Warm Husk is definitely a safe pick um, to be bringing into PvE just because of how much health and how fast your dodge comes back in this game. Even with the dodge cooldown uh, nerf that they added in, I think a few seasons ago, uh, one or two seasons ago, I, I can't remember if it was with Beyond Light or with Rivals, but even with that nerf from nine second to a 13 second dodge, um, I'm not, that was in PVP. I can't remember what the values are in PVE. It's been a while, but even with that nerf, still really good you still get it's like on demand healing every 30 seconds so uh pretty good it can save your ass for sure and then the last um, helmet we have for hunters is celestial nighthawk instant s tier this bad boy makes bottom tree gunslinger worth using um it's just the boss nuker. It's just always a boss nuker. It just nukes bosses. It makes your super, even though it only procs on your super cast, it just makes your super so damn powerful that it's just worth it to run this thing, especially for raids when you just want to do significant amounts of damage to bosses. This thing is just, it's still top tier. It's always been top tier. Next up, we have Gauntlets, as I believe I've covered all the helmets here. We have Gauntlets. Uh, first Gauntlet we have here is Shinobu's Vow. And what Shinobu's Vow does is it pretty much just buffs your skip grenades as the art class. Um, don't think this is very helpful in PvE. I don't think solely buffing your skip grenades so that, that, that they're better is really a useful perk to have in PvE. It's just that in PvP it's nice because it makes it so that they have, um, I think, better tracking. And yeah, you get the additional nade, but it's just like, skip nades, like, to me they don't scream like, oh, this is a good PvE nade, you can spam this or whatever. It's just like, it's kind of like a meme exotic, I think, for PvE that is. For PvP it, it definitely has its uses. Uh, next, we have Ethereum's Embrace. I believe that's how you say it. This is a, a newer exotic from Beyond Light. What it does is it buffs Bottom Tree Gunslinger's Throwing Knife. It makes it so that your Throwing Knife can bounce up to two times, and on precision, rapid precision hits, it buffs the damage of the throwing the weighted throwing knife and on top of that when you get the rapid precision hits i believe you can also stun shielded champ uh shielded targets not champions and with the weighted knife you can stun unstoppable champions with the weighted knife with a theory's embrace pretty interesting i'd say i've definitely seen some videos where you can get some crazy bounces with a theory's embrace and hit people you might have thought you wouldn't have hit before i personally don't have this exotic um for my full for full disclosure here so this me rating it here is more of just like a speculation um but i guess point being that even with all this time i've had i still haven't grinded out this exotic to me i just don't think this exotic is that useful in pve definitely can have its uses because of how the weighted knife can stun champions but i feel like this is more of a pvp exotic really than it is a pve exotic sure it can stun shielded enemies and unstoppable champions but that's just kind of like an added bonus and really if you're using bottom tree gunslinger in pve i'd say just run celestial nighthawk just because of how much damage you will do to bosses and um, enemy targets when you have your super i just don't think running bottom tree gunslinger is worth it if you're not gonna run celestial nighthawk so i give it d tier just because it has uses with stunning shielded targets and stunning um, unstoppable champions 
Next up, we have Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves. What Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves do, does is they, I think they boost handling and reload for sidearms. And then they also boost, um, I think they boost it even farther when you're critically low. Let me just double check here. Yeah, it boosts sidearms, especially when you're wounded. Um, it's okay. It's hard to say because on PC, sidearms aren't that great in terms of they aren't desired over what SMGs can just do instead. Um, on console, it might be a different story. Um, sidearms are a lot better on console and for PvP. Mechaneers might be a different story for con console users as well. However, for PvE PC, Mechaneers trick sleeves and where sidearms fit in the meta currently, not that useful. I think more of a D tier if and if sidearms were to receive a significant buff and we just got better sidearms, like I really wish there were more full auto sidearms. Um, and just had like more interesting perk pools. I just, but the thing is like the range they have and the mag size just doesn't outweigh um, the benefits of using an SMG that has a larger and deeper mag um, mag size and reserve pool. And then the fact that SMGs have in more interesting perks on them, um, stuff like frenzy that you can get for the extraordinary rendition so kind of a d tier but it's not completely useless like having better invis time or something it at least is boosting your weapons for pve next up we have oath keepers and oath keepers while they do just make it so you can infinitely draw your bows it's really f tier like i don't with how pve is you're not going to be needing to hold your bow at full um, draw, really, in any scenario. Maybe if you're using Leviathan's Breath, but Leviathan's Breath, as you know from my tier list, is like a DF tier exotic for PvE, so not not very useful. You're not going to get a lot of uh, use out of Oath Keepers. Next up, we have Liar's Handshake. Liar's Handshake... I still think is a top tier exotic just because of how great and how fun it is to use with one, two punch shotguns. Um, what cross or what liar handshake does is it buffs um, cross counter where if, when you dodge, you get your melee back. However, when you get a melee kill with liars handshake, you get your dodge back. And then when you have your dodge back, you dodge again, get your melee back, get a melee kill with um, Liar's Handshake and Cross Counter. This only works It's with top, um, top Tree Arc. I don't think it works with Bottom Tree Arc. So with Top Tree Arc staff, you get the punch in, you get a stack of Cross Counter, you get your dodge back. You dodge, and this is if you're using Gambler's Dodge, don't use the um, other dodge, the Weapon Reloading Dodge. I can't remember its name. I just know Gambler's Dodge gets your melee back. So you dodge, you get your melee back. You hit again with cross counter. So you have two stacks of cross, uh, cross counter. And you keep repeating this process until you have three stacks. And then you use one, two punch. And you just absolutely annihilate adds with it. It's just such a fun build to use. It's It's very fun. And it's very... Like, it still does a decent amount of damage to mini bosses. Um, not so sure about champions because of how champions work in this game, but like killing Lost Sector bosses is pretty fun using um, Liar's Handshake. I wouldn't say it's S tier because of the play style. It forces you to play, forces you to play a very up close and um, up close play style with shotguns, and shotguns are kind of in a weird position in PvE for some. Um, encounters in this game wouldn't say it's my go-to especially because arc staff is such a weak super for pve in my honest opinion i don't believe arc staff is that strong of a pve super but having cross counter and one two punch shotgun you can just nu absolutely nuke uh certain elites majors uh mini bosses with 
this exotic equipped. The next exotic we have here is Sealed Ahamkara Grasps. And this exotic makes it so if you deal melee damage to a target, it just reloads. It auto reloads your equipped weapons. Um, not that useful to be honest. Maybe if you're trying to speed run certain things or you're um, trying to, you know, uh, gimmick your way through something, having an auto reload like this. Um, work out for you but i'm pretty sure they nerfed it so you can't constantly be procking it so you can't like constantly dodge reproc it um by mail i feel like they added a cooldown because there was a little thing going around where you could pretty much do a melee and then have like infinite reload for a few seconds like the old how the old infinite reloading worked with luna factions and rally barricades so i not sure how these play out but kind of like an F tier really to me, especially when you could just use um, the other, the Hunter Weapon Reload Dodge to reload your weapon or just use like Dragon Shadow to reload all your weapons. I know it, it consumes your dodge, but you're consuming your melee for this, so really doesn't matter all too much. Uh, next up we have Kefri's Sting. And what Kefri's Sting does is when you throw your smoke bomb on the ground and you stand in it, it grants you true sight and true sight is pretty much allows you to see enemies through walls. The other thing is that if your melee is fully charged as a hunter and you proc your melee on a target, it will consume your smoke bomb instantly and also makes your smoke bomb, Kefri's Sting makes your smoke bomb do more damage. This is more of a PvP exotic. You're never really going to need true sight in PvE and if you're I feel like it's really a waste you get up to um, an enemy, you put your punch in, and say if it's just like a red bar you just wanted to punch, well now you've just consumed your smoke bomb. Sure you got true sight, but who gives a crap if you have true sight in PvE? You pretty much already know where all enemy adds are at all times, so that's going to be an F for me. Uh, for me. Next we have Aeons, or Aeon Swift. Instant S tier, as you know from the PvP or the PvE Warlock Guide I made, with the changes they made to Aeon, especially how you can, with, um, I believe, the Cult of the Sect, you can pretty much just generate Heavy from thin air by uh, doing a finisher on, I think, mini bosses and champions. Such a nice perk to have. Really, I'm not going to go too in-depth again with the Aeons, but it's just the whole fact that you can make Heavy for free. That's what makes Aeon's S tier. And especially when you are using Stasis, since not a lot of exotics um, pair well with the Stasis subclasses currently, Aeon's is a pretty good pick to bring with Stasis if you're not using Mask of Bacchus, that is. Um, pretty, uh, Aeon's pretty damn good for Grandmaster, Master, Nightfall content, and raids when you need to generate heavy for your teammates. Definitely, I think this will be a top exotic to bring into vog day one for hunters um if they're running stasis or something like that next we have young ahamkara spine i believe it's called and what this does it just pretty much buffs your trip mines and makes them do more damage um it's like shinobus it's like f tier really i i you trip mines are not good in pve they're good in pvp but they're not good in pve and last but not least, we have shards. And shards, I want to put at probably like B tier. B or like A tier. Mostly because of how much uh, super energy you get back from casting. You cast shards, you, your blades hit a bunch of targets, they explode and kill them. And you're, you pretty much get refunded super energy based off of how many targets you've killed. And depending on certain activities, you can get a ton of super back. Um, and other activities, you can't really. But the fact that it gives you pretty much free super back, that's a pretty damn nice exotic to have. And especially with how good of a subclass um, Middle Tree uh, Gunslinger is, the Blade Barrage, it's, it's good enough to bring into PvE, honestly. Honest, it's not that great in PvP, but for PvE, 
where it's all about ad slaying and just how it, it pretty much just refunds you super energy on your super cast if you're able to have your um blade brush hit enough targets then it's uh it's a pretty good deal honestly it's pretty good in uh activities like gambit as well when you're doing damage to primeval i've used it against tanix um during dcs i get refunded like three-fourths of my super when i use it on him when he's in final stand so it's a it's a pretty nice exotic to have especially since it refunds you free super energy that concludes the gauntlets next up we're going to talk about the chest armor the chest pieces the first chest piece we have here is similar to geomax it's raiju's harness well, it's not similar to Geomax, but it's similar to the way that Chaos Reach works for Warlocks, but now it's applied to an exotic. What the exotic does is for your Whirlwind, your Middle Tree Arc Staff, when you're doing the Twirly Twirl, it just pretty much allows you to cancel that super um, instead of having to use that super for the duration of your super bar. It's like... Um, it's like Geo, but it doesn't give you the... It's like Chaos Reach, I'm trying to say here. It's like Chaos Reach where you can cancel the super and you're refunded, I want to say half, at least half. So I'm not sure how this will play out now that Geos are nerfed. If Raijus will still allow you to keep a significant amount of super and if we might see a shift to Raijus maybe. But the thing is that... Right... It, Middle Tree Arc Staff is not that great compared to its top and bottom counterparts as well as its as other subclass um, classes like Spectral Blades are. So I don't really know where it will sit in PvP. For PvE, I guess canceling um, your super halfway through is nice. But again, Arc, Arc Staff is not that great in PvE, so d tier just because you can keep half of your super to use for later next we have dragon shadow dragon shadow honestly a pretty good exotic i wouldn't say it's like an s tier exotic for me for uh, pve but it's definitely top tier exotic just because of how how much it can help with just reloading all your weapons and boosting the handling on all your weapons for a few seconds. And if you pair this with like top tree um, Night Soccer, where you go invis on you know, invis on a dodge, you can pair it with Gamblers, where Gamblers gives you your melee back. So you dodge, you get your melee back. That is if you dodge near an enemy, you get your melee back. And then all your weapons get reloaded and you get boosted handling on all your weapons. For PvP, it's a top tier exotic. But for PvE, it's just as good for PvE, especially when you need to reload all your weapons to get out of a tricky situation. Or you just want to reload all your weapons so you can do more boss melting damage. Um, definitely a top tier exotic to take if you don't have any of these other S tier or I'd say like A tier exotics. It's, I guess, yeah, A. A is a pretty comfortable spot to put Dragon Shadow. Next up, we have Lucky Raspberry, I think. Just want to make sure, yeah, it's Lucky Raspberry. I think what Lucky Raspberry does is... Let me just double check here. Because I always mix up Lucky Raspberry with Raiden Flux. So yeah, Lucky Raspberry does with Shinobu's and Young Ahamkara Spine is it just buffs your um, Arc Bolt needs. Not very useful for PvE. Uh, gonna have to be an F tier for me. Next up we have Gwizen, Gwizen Vest. What Gwizen Vest does is it pretty much just buffs your Spectral Blade super. Or it buffs Spectral Blades while you're in your super. It makes it, I believe, so you... Uh, while you're invis your super lasts longer and your slashes cost less or something like that um you can obviously tell i haven't used it in a long ass time it used to be very dominant in pvp but in pve spectral blades not not a really good exotic t um uh subclass of using i think just because it buffs spectral 
I don't know. It's really hard to justify using Spectral Blades in PvE. They're just not... It's just not a good super compared to the other supers available to uh, Night Stalker and with Gunslinger and with, like... I, I would take Top Tree Arc over using Spectra with Gwizen. I would take Top Tree Arc with Liar's Handshake over um, taking Gwizen. Like, it's just not a good PvE exotic. Next, we have Aphidius Spate. Spate, I think is how you say it. Pretty much gives you two melee charges um, for your knife. So it gives you two... Um, I think, is it two melee charges? I thought it was just two knife charges that you could get. Yeah, it's two knife charges. So this is specifically for your gunslinger classes um, for solar. So you would have two of the, for top tree, it would be two of the proximity explosion knives. For middle tree, it's the fan knives. And for bottom tree, you would have two weighted knives. Don't think, I don't think this is incredibly useful. I think, it has potential, I'm putting it D because it has potential if you're using the fan knives, especially with how the fan knives work. If you know for the fan knives, if you're dealing burn damage, you get your dodge back faster, you dodge again, you get your melee back, and then you can just rinse and repeat. And I believe also if you have playing with fire stacks, you also generate super energy, so you get your super back faster as um, hunter middle tree. So has its uses there. Next up, Omni Oculus instant s tier for me i freaking love this exotic it is just so useful for pve just having two smoke bombs and having those smoke bombs give you damage resistance as well such a such a great exotic to have with the bottom tree night soccer i just love using this thing bottom tree night soccer being able to make your allies invisible with you is just such a useful perk to have especially in certain uh, instances of grandmaster nightfall content as well as things like dungeons. I really have forgotten to mention dungeons uh, in my my other tier list. But yeah, in dungeons, being invisible can save your life, can allow you and your teammates to rotate out of um, difficult situations. Say you're like getting beamed down a hallway. Now you and your allies are invis. You can escape from danger. Pretty damn useful. I really love this thing. It's And with how... Um, the bottom tree works is that when you make allies invisible you get your um, nade back if you do nade damage as uh, bottom tree it refunds your melee and i mean yeah it's just such a great uh chess piece to be using with bottom tree night soccer even though it forces you to use only one subclass it's still what it offers um, to your team the utility it offers is just so incredibly helpful that i just love it next we have sixth coyote and what this does is it gives you two dodges and i think having two dodges is just kind of like an average um it's just an average average exotic i wouldn't say it's like above average like a b tier um i definitely think you could just run Omni Oculus instead, um, would be slightly better. But if you don't have something like Omni Oculus on you, then Coyote can definitely um, fill in that role by giving you two dodges. It works better with Top Tree uh, Night Soccer because you can get the dodge in Viz. It can also work with Bottom Tree because you can run Gambler's Dodge and just dodge, get your melee, dodge again, get your melee back so you can make people invis it's like the poor man's omni oculus for bottom tree i think um instead of getting two melees you get two dodges and the dodges bring back your melee um so yeah i think it's just c tier i wouldn't say it's an exceptional like a b tier exotic and i don't really think there's a lot of b tier hunter exotics or c tier it's really it's it's night night and day black black and white really it's like it's either sa or df is what i'm trying to say here for the hunter exotics at least for pve that is and last but not least we have raiden flux and what raiden flux does it just buffs arc staff um and you can like chain 
your arc staff arc attacks um, to enemies, which as I've said in the past for this stream video is that arc staff is not a great exotic, maybe a great PVE super to be using. Yes, maybe it can be good for ad clearing, but Tether kind of does that better and gives more orbs and can generate your super back to you instantly. Um, especially if you're wearing Orpheus rigs. So just not not that great of exotic F tier. And then finally, we have the like armor. And the first like armor we have here is Orpheus rig. And even with the nerfs Orpheus received, I know everyone's ragging on Orpheus like, oh, it's not as good as it once used to. Well, yeah, getting your entire super back on a super cast and tethering a bunch of enemies like that's kind of stupid that's why they nerf phoenix cradle or not phoenix cradle phoenix protocol for warlocks of course this was going to get hit with a nerf so yeah you can't get your entire super back but you can still get up to like three fourths of your super and with some ad killing and or pickup you can pretty much get your super back so there's still these are still top tier um leg armor pieces to be using in pve Next, we have Gemini Jester. What Gemini Jester does is it disorients enemies, and in PvP, it also removes the radar. Um, disorienting enemies can be kind of useful, um, especially if you don't want them to be attacking you. This can pair well with things like blinding nades. However, I don't think this works against um, like mini bosses or champions. Um, it definitely works against red bars and majors the orange bars uh or elites if you will it's just a really it's more of like a d exotic it's i don't know i think definitely blinding enemies is very good and can definitely get you out of a tricky situation so i'm just going to keep it at c tier here next we have lucky no not lucky raspberry it's um God, I always confuse all the hunter exotics because they just feel the same. This is Lucky Pants, not Lucky Raspberry. Lucky Pants, what it does is it increases your hand cannon, hand cannon handling. And I believe it increases the reload speed. I'll just double check on that. Uh, no, I don't believe it does that. But what it also does that is that if you get a precision kill... Um, or if you get a precision hit, my bad, it loads a stowed reserve ammo into your magazine. So, um, or no, fuck, I'm thinking of it wrong. If you're using another weapon, it will load, and you get precision hits with that weapon, it will load ammo into your stowed hand cannon. So you could have zero kill, or zero ammo in your magazine swap to another gun get a bunch of precision hits and all you switch back to your hand cannon oh lo and behold it's reloaded also when you switch back to your hand cannon initially you get a accuracy buff it allows you to have more accurate shots when you switch back to it don't think this is incredibly useful in pve maybe i found it more useful in pvp i think in pve if it were to do as I was confusedly saying is that if you had your hand cannon out and you're hitting precision hits and it were to reload, you know, ammo into the mag, I think that would make it a pretty great exotic to be using in PVE. But the fact that you have to switch off of it in order to utilize um, what it does to buff your hand cannons, I just don't think it's that great. And it doesn't pair well if you're using shotguns. It probably pairs well if you're using snipers. But it's just kind of like a, I wouldn't say it's completely useless because of how it buffs handling and you can reload stowed weapons get by getting precision hits. It's just not, it's not a great exotic. It's a, it's a D tier exotic. Next up we have Stompies. And Stompies, while a movement exotic, don't offer much to your kit. I'd still say Stompies are relatively um, useful just in the way that they buff your jump. It can make 
it a little bit easier to jump um, in certain like jumping puzzles or jumping activities. Stompies can also just be useful for like um, timed activities where you need to sprint faster, move faster. Um, I wouldn't go to say that it's an A tier exotic for PvE. And I wouldn't really say it's just an average exotic because movement in this game is very important, even in PvE. So I think being able to buff your movement like that and just being able to move faster. And like, this is just like a, a exotic I just run as well. If I don't feel like running any of these other exotics or going all try hard, I'll just slap stompies on because it just makes me move faster and get around certain activities faster than uh, normal. Next up, we have frosties. Frosties, they, while sprinting, you get your abilities back. And if you're, if you dodge, it also increases your sprint speed um, as well. And frosties can be very useful for stasis, for getting your stasis abilities back, um, especially PvE or PvP. I think frosties, while they definitely don't see a lot of use, I think they are a top tier exotic, especially just because by sprinting, you get your abilities back. And if you want to do nade spamming, especially with stasis, Stompies definitely helps. I wouldn't, it's on the border for me. Frosty's really on the border for me of being S tier, probably like A plus, but I don't know if Frosty's to me are really S tier. And then the last leg armor exotic we have are Bombardiers. And what Bombardiers do is when you dodge, it leaves like a little trap behind and the trap explodes. Kind of like a meme exotic, kind of just, I'm feeling F tier. And the bomb really doesn't do like a significant amount of damage either. And yep, yeah, that concludes the Hunter PVE exotic tier list. Uh, the video after this, I'll be covering the PVP tier list for exotic uh, Hunter armor. If you like the video, please leave a like. If you liked it enough, maybe subscribe to the channel. Um, I don't really care what happens i don't make money off of this channel it's just uh something i do for fun um and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching